Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation podcast. Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation, where our experts bring you fresh ideas and new perspectives on how consumers eat, drink, shop, groom and think. I'm Andrew Davidson, SVP and Chief Insights Officer for Mintel Compo Media, based in New York. And today we're going to be talking about uh, a little shopping event that's coming up called Amazon Prime Day. I'm delighted today to be joined by Alexis de Salva. And Hi, Le- Andrew. Le- Hi. He- hello. And Leah and M. Key in Chicago and Nick Carroll in London. Welcome to the pod. Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah, glad to be here. Hello. Well, great. Well, so if you could please just say a few words, just introduce yourselves, tell us how long you've been at Mintel, how long you've been tracking your various areas of expertise. Um, I'll start. So I'm Alexis DeSalva. I am the senior analyst um, for retail and e-commerce over on the research and reports team. I've been with Mintel almost three years um, covering the retail and apparel categories. And prior to Mintel, um, spent um, almost a decade in this industry in largely in merchandising. So really in like the women's apparel, um, as well as some kind of dry goods merchandising um, for national and global retailer, so I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm Leanne Oki. I'm a senior digital marketing analyst for Mintel's Compare Media uh, Omni team, focusing on digital marketing, of course. So I've been at Mintel for about two years now, and my focus has mostly been on uh, digital marketing strategies across many different sectors. Now for Amazon specifically, I've been following Amazon um, and their Prime Day for a few years now, um, both on their promotional marketing front. So how exactly have they been promoting uh, Prime Day and the response from other brands, as well as what is the business behind, uh, business strategy behind Prime Day and how does it support Amazon's overall business as a whole? And I am Nick Carroll. I'm the Associate Director of Retail Research uh, here in the UK, in London. Um, I've been with Mintel for five years, um, covering all sorts of retail sectors, but in particular e-commerce, authoring Mintel's first UK-based Amazon report for January this year, which you should all go and read. It's excellent. And also, uh, I've been, as Amazon keeps reminding me, an Amazon shopper since 2007, so obviously an excellent. Right in this area now. <laughs> well, so, we'd see, yeah, so thank you. So we're, today we're going to be talking about Amazon Prime Day. We're going to be talking about what's different this year. We're going to be talking about what it means for brands, what it means for marketers. Now, you know, last year, 2018, was reportedly the biggest Prime Day in history. 100 million products were sold, uh, according to Amazon. This year, it spans two days, July 15th and July 16th. And it already feels a bit different. You know, on the one hand, you've got the Prime Day concert uh, featuring Taylor Swift that's going to be live streamed to Prime members. You know, on the other hand, you've got, you know, workers at one of Amazon's warehouses in Minnesota planning a six-hour strike over uh, working conditions on Prime Day. But still, Amazon Prime Day is the single largest day for acquiring new Prime members. But let's go back to the beginning. You know, where did it all start? You know, where, where, when did this all kick off for Amazon? Um, so I can give a little background about that. Um, uh, Amazon has been around for um, quite some time, but it's only been doing its prime benefits for a few years. So it started this celebration in 2015 to really celebrate its loyalty members. So um, I think people just have gotten so used to it that they think it's been around forever. But the 2015 um, original Prime Day was really a way to celebrate Amazon's 20th anniversary. Um, as you mentioned, it's originally as a one-day holiday, so it's not unique in the fact of other retailers have been doing this. Um, you know, you'll see certain retailers do a one-day sale or a sale that commemorates their own anniversary, like Nordstrom does theirs every July. Um, but in the United States, this was kind of the first one to really, in in the e-commerce age, build up this one day solely around a hol- or solely around a retailer, kind of creating its own holiday um, off the peak holiday season, much like a singles day um, from Alibaba. Um, So really the idea was to kind of 
celebrate its own members, but then also encourage others to join them. Um, and really did that with deals that surpass uh, Black Friday deals. Um, you mentioned 2018 was their biggest sales day, and that was the first year they expanded beyond the 24 hour uh, mark. So they were actually ran it for 36 hours. Um, but this year is the first time that it's not prime day, it's prime days. So it'll be interesting to see how um, this goes down in the books. And it's, you know, it's expanded in terms of countries over the years. It has, yeah. And so, I mean, so how, how big is Prime Day outside of the U.S.? Well, I think that's, as the international correspondent here, that's where I come in. Um, so Amazon itself has said that, you know, it's going to run Prime deals in 18 of its markets. Um, but actually, if you think of uh, the global store, which allows shoppers all around the world to come in and buy products from the US, UK, Germany and Japan, the actual reach of this will be much greater than that. The focus is, of course, on the biggest markets. So, you know, we've obviously got the US, but, you know, Germany is its biggest market outside of that, near 20 billion in terms of sales. Then we've got the UK around 15 and then Japan at 13 billion dollars. Um, so, you know, it's obviously an event that is to celebrate all things prime. So the, therefore the relative membership in each market gives it some scale. We've done some recent research around that uh, in the EMA and we found that, you know, in Italy, it's actually a market that Amazon came to late in 2010, but it's quickly established itself as a market leader. Some 42% of internet users there are prime members and that compares to 41% in Spain, um, 33% in Germany and a, a bit lower in uh, France at 18%. But I think if you look at the data we have for the UK, where nearly a quarter of online shoppers are members of Amazon Prime, um, there's actually another 13% that say that they use Prime but don't have a membership. So whether that's through nefarious means or simply sharing an account with someone else, if we look at that as an example, the actual reach of Amazon Prime is much bigger than that because you can obviously get your friends to buy products, etc., or indeed share it with other people. And, um, you know, if we compare it, I think, Alexis, you mentioned Singles Day there in terms of the size of that. You know, it doesn't, Amazon doesn't give hard numbers. I think you mentioned 100 million products sold. Um, but in terms of Single Day, that's the single biggest shopping day uh, on the planet, um, not to go over the top on that one, but that is what Alibaba says. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it originated back in the 90s. It was actually uh, initially a celebration of being single and being independent, hence why it's held on the 11th of the 11th. So with the four ones representing singledom. Um, so to give some context relative to Amazon Prime Day, Alibaba sold $25 billion uh, worth of products in just 15 hours last year. Uh, with the eventual total, if we combine it with what JD.com did, uh, hitting over 50 billion. Uh, so for some context, you know, in terms of the UK, that's around a quarter of all non-food spending in a 24-hour period, or as I did some maths, that is actually greater than 110 of the world's 195 countries' GDP. <laughs> wow. So, you that's know, some, uh, that's some yeah, shopping. <laughs> yeah, that is, a, that is a good deal of shopping, that. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's, in fact, it's real, really fascinating context. I put it in that global perspective. So I'm going to push you each now to talk about some predictions. You know, it, it, it's it, the day is is upon us. So what do you think is going to happen? Let's talk about some predictions for this year. Um, I'm going to press each of you for your top prediction um, for 2019 Amazon Prime Day. Liaren, I'll start with you. All right. Wow. Um, I have a few of them. But I think probably what's going to be top of mind for Amazon, aside of the fact of really instilling kind of the uh, value of a prime membership to kind of justify retention amongst its current prime members, um, I think that Amazon is going to be focusing on more of the lower income consumer um, in 2019 and onward. So we found that within U.S. households, Amazon has hit a saturation point in terms of prime membership. Um, and on top of that, Amazon, we believe, is going to really target in its uh, most direct competition, which is Walmart, uh, that really has kind of successfully uh, reached out to that lower income, income consumer. Um, I like to think of uh, Prime Day sales as more of a showcase and more of a showcase of the capabilities of Prime Day um, and an introduction to new consumers and what they can have in store. 
And so my biggest prediction with Amazon is that they're going to leverage Prime Day and kind of infuse their new uh, credit builder card that they have with Synchrony um, to reach out to those lower income consumers and provide uh, Prime membership deals when signing up through the store builder card to help create that base um, and in turn create more Prime memberships uh, within U.S. households. Interesting. So expanding their reach, and you, I think you just wrote a blog about this, right? About and so, which mm-hmm. I thought was uh, fascinating. I did. I did. So it also covers um, other predictions, of course. Really touches in on the retention aspect um, of Prime Day. So Amazon's other biggest concern is how can they keep members interested in Prime um, beyond the immediacy of shipping, right? So really showcasing the other amenities that they can get with a Prime membership like its pharmaceutical capabilities, its immediacy in terms of shipping, um, as well as more luxury products uh, that they have provided from other beloved brands like Apple. Can I jump in on that too and add mine now? Because that kind of goes in tandem. Um, I think to echo what Learen said, I think at this point it's not about um, introducing itself to the world because so many people do know about Amazon, but I think it's kind of reintroducing what Amazon's about and how much it actually can serve a large group of people um, and kind of finding newness there. So I think that another focus for them for Prime Day is aside from like the big tech discounts that you're going to get, you know, I think everyone can just assume that it's going to be Kindles and Alexa. Um, there is going to be this focus on on offering deals on maybe some items that you can't normally get a deal on, um, like in the apparel and fashion categories. Amazon's really trying to blow out their fashion capabilities. Um, they actually had Amazon lockers at Coachella this year and then did like a huge um, uh, promotion about like all of the different styles with different influencers and things like that to really show people it's not just, you know, about electronics or even even groceries, it's about other areas of your life. And to Aaron's point, where's the biggest leakage from a competitive standpoint? It's often Walmart and Target. So, and a lot of times they're scooping up that, that customer who's looking to kind of satisfy many needs, not just like the household or the groceries. Um, so I think you're going to see a larger focus, focus on them from the apparel standpoint, um, both from their extended brand partnerships you know they work with adidas now they have some higher end designers um, but also from their internal brands and capabilities so they've really extended their um, private brands and activewear which is a huge huge uh, category of growth for apparel and then last year they piloted um, try before you buy options through prime wardrobe so you basically have the option to order a bunch of different clothes without paying for them if you're a Prime member, have them sent to your house, try them on, figure out what you want to keep and send back whatever you don't with um, not paying for shipping. Um, So it's really kind of deepening this level of trust, but also playing into that immediacy and convenience that they're known for. Oh, this is the problem with going last. You know, you get your predictions stolen. So I think Alexis has slightly taken one of mine here, but it's not too bad. I think, you know, I would have certainly put clothing up there as going to be front and center of Prime Day this year. Amazon's um, the second fastest currently um, clothing retailer or seller seller of clothing in the UK, just behind JD Sports. And we only got our Prime Wardrobe back end of last year in November. So this would be a key time to now promote that as a benefit to members. However, I do have a backup, so we're all good. Um, I think... What we're going to see a lot of this year is a focus on more exclusive products or indeed products launching alongside Prime Day. So we've already got hints at that, you know, on uh, Amazon currently is promoting uh, some Prime Day launches, at least in the UK, which will be new products that are launching um, alongside the day. And this sort of idea is borrowed from Single Day in China where the likes of Alibaba and JD.com have um, looked to continue to like rouse excitement in those events by getting you know one-off products, products that are only available for 24 hours that engage consumers in the day. 
Um, and there's also another hint, you know, we've seen, we don't know what it is yet, but in India, um, Amazon's partnered with OnePlus, a smartphone uh, maker, uh, to, uh, to promise an exclusive launch for the day. It's probably likely to be a different color of a phone, but still that does indicate that it is learning from how uh, other companies are keeping these successful events running year on year. <laughs> Andrew, can I cheat and have one more prediction that I think it's worth uh, for our group to talk about? Bit here. Oh, go on then. <laughs> All right, thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, we are entering an era of streaming wars with uh, Hulu and Disney. Well, Disney most notably is going to be launching their own platform. NBC Universal. Well, NBC Universal will also have its own platform. They're actually pulling the office out of Netflix, which caused a huge uproar. So I think with this current kind of uh, ecosystem within streaming, we're going to be seeing a lot more efforts on Amazon's end to be competitive within the streaming front. We're already seeing it with their live concert that they're having with Taylor Swift. I think it's to inspire people to go to Amazon for live streaming capabilities. Uh, they also announced a partnership with MLB for live streaming on a sports uh, on a sports end. That's something that's mainly been dominated by Hulu that they're clearly trying to be more competitive with. Um, so I think with Prime and Prime Day, we're going to be seeing a lot more efforts with marketing their uh, uh, Prime Now and Prime streaming uh, capabilities here. So a lot more than we've seen in the past. So... We, so you, uh, a couple of you mentioned the impact on Walmart, Target. So, you know, really, what is the impact on the, the broader retail industry? Well, there really is a contagion effect. So it's not just Amazon having to one-up itself. It's the competitors as well. So, you know, we know that Walmart and Target tend to be where there's some leakage from Amazon. And we've seen um, some direct competition from them. But I think the two most notable um, competitors for the Prime Day directly are Target and eBay. So eBay um, announced right around when um, Amazon announced plans for this year's Prime Day, they kind of cheekily played fun at the fact that Amazon site did crash last year. So they are offering um, a slew of discounts from that started July 1st through the 22nd. So it's really a three week savings with different themes throughout each week. There were 4th of July themed discounts last week. There's going to be summer themed discounts um, at the end of the sale period. But then for that prime day period on July 15th, they're running a quote unquote a crash sale um, to play fun at the fact that prime day suffered some outages last year. And they're touting that they'll be there with discounts when Prime Day site goes down or Prime site goes down. Um, and really, they're offering a lot of discounts on items similar to Amazon. So houseware essentials, electronics, but are also are expanding into the fashion um, and apparel offerings as well. So that kind of echoes what Nick and I were both saying earlier about, you know, Amazon will likely place a um, more of an emphasis on the fashion deals as well. Um, and then Target is one up in their own competition again. So last year they introduced a one day sale, um, very much similar to Prime Day. And this year they are coming back with Target deal days and it is also a two day event. Um, so they are going to be offering discounts on a number of items, um, some of which don't typically go on sale. So they're definitely known for their homewares, their apparel and their toy collections. And in particular um, have really built a Following around their uh, private brands, and those aren't often um, included in sales, but this time they are going to be included in these deal days among quote unquote hundreds of thousands of items. Um, so the interesting thing here is that while there's exclusivity in terms of what's on sale, um, there is inclusivity in terms of who can actually benefit from that sale. So you don't need a prime membership. You don't need um, you know, to belong to Target's loyalty program or to have their credit card, but there will be extra incentives uh, for those that do. Um, the other imitator, I would say, is Wayfair, um, who does really a great job in their own right of kind of creating this retailer one day holiday. So they do Way Day um, in April. They started it in April 2018, and it was, I believe, one of their highest selling days. Um, and it was so successful that they did it again this past April as well. So it's very similar to Prime Day in the fact that they're an e-commerce retailer. You really don't have that physical store presence to go to. So it does kind of create this hype. And there is no 
real reason other than the fact that they're celebrating themselves and their customers. Um, and they offer, you know, those deep, deep discounts on items that don't always go on sale and are higher ticket items. So do, um, we, do we think that these, these other days, are, are they successful, do you think? Are they working? They seem to be working for Wayfair. I would say for Target as well, because I know Target had one of its highest selling days when they did the one day event last year. So the fact that they're coming back and have also extended it to two days, um, you know, speaks volumes. I think where it becomes a little undetermined is when we roll around to the holiday season, because Mm. unlike this prime day timing, which is always sometime around mid July and there's, Yes, there's 4th of July in the States, but that's not everywhere. And there's not necessarily another big event happening around it. When you look at Black Friday, that's always going to be around the same time every year. And then it's always going to be followed by Christmas, you know, a few weeks later. So it's kind of like these single days might be great, these Prime Day or Prime Day imitations. But then what does that mean later down the road for, you know, the the holiday time frame? And for the holiday, it often does depend on when Christmas is and when, you know, Thanksgiving falls in the States because that it can create a longer selling period or a shortened selling period. And then Mm -hmm. it can be harder to comp those sales year over year. So if you have a Target two-day event that's phenomenal that you didn't have last year, but you have a shorter selling period come Black Friday through Christmas. What does that mean for the whole year? Mm-hmm. And so that's I where think, it gets a little tricky. Oh. Um, Alexis, I think to add to that aspect in terms of kind of like long-term value of these customers and these deals, I think a lot of these companies like the Targets of the world and the Walmarts of the world need to understand that Prime Day isn't necessarily a sale day for Amazon as it is a way for Amazon to get as many Prime members as possible. Prior, Amazon cares less about the volume of products it sells, it sells on Prime Day or during that uh, time frame, um, as much as it cares about the amount of Prime members it has signs up to its platform because that in terms gets more people into its ecosystem. And when the holidays come around, there are more people that are able to kind of capture those prime deals that happen. So there's more of a long-term type of revenue um, that occurs when Amazon prioritize prime memberships over the products. So I think brands need to realize that it's less about the products that are sold as it is about the amenities that are being promoted. So I think that in order for brands to stay competitive with Amazon during um, kind of like this Black Friday and July era that we're in with Prime Day, Um, and these other uh, deals that we're seeing is that they either need to create a membership program where people can kind of get into their own ecosystem and get their own added benefits, or they need to create those amenities that are added on um, the day of the sale, like immediate shipping or kind of deals that they can get through other types of services as well. And I would say that's where Target I think is doing a good job because they are spotlighting the conveniences and the amenities that they offer that maybe people don't realize Like you can get, you know, your groceries shipped through shipped that app um, or through the service that they use. You can do um, order online and pick up in store. You can go to the store and buy something and have it shipped to your house. So I think they're using this to really spotlight like, hey, we do a lot of these expedited delivery or um, customized delivery options as well. But also we have these exclusive brands that, you know, we're trying to give you um, quality at value or fashion at value. And now we're also for one or two days only giving it to you for a little bit better of a price. So it's kind of um, building that awareness for Target themselves without necessarily relying just on the steep discounts. But I I think that's a great point. It's really, um, what is it really about for Amazon? And then what does that mean for the competitors? Because it's it's not just, you know, sales. Yeah, and I think to give a UK perspective on this, we've actually seen many retailers pull back from trying to match Amazon um, day and date with Prime. So if we go back to, say, 2017, we had, and this is particularly true of the electricals market. So in in the UK, 50% of all, or over 50% of all spending on electrical goods comes online. So that means, and Amazon's dominance in that area means that it's highly competitive. So in 2017, we saw both Dixon's Carplane, or uh, Curry's PC World, the UK's biggest, uh, 
Electrical retailer Match Amazon for a one-day event of deals, and we also saw AO.com, uh, an online-only competitor, uh, match with its own deals, uh, cheekily called Prime Deals. Um, but then, come 2018, both rode back from that because, actually, in reality, as Lauren was saying, this is the day. Prime Day is much more about Amazon building longer-term value for its customers, and for retailers matching it day and day ultimately they may draw some sales in there, but they're just reducing margin on any kind of full price sales down the line. So I think it's been interesting. I mean, there'll be still some around in the market and, you know, Prime Day in the UK falls at an odd time where traditionally retailers would be in promotion or um, sale anyway. But, you know, in terms of the hard, we're matching you. We've seen a lot of retailers row back from that here. That's, that's interesting. So it's almost like there's there's a strategy. One of the, One strategy is sort of just benefiting from all of this promotion and advertising around Prime Day is sort of like everybody benefits to a certain extent if you can capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. But that's almost like a short-term strategy is what you're saying, is that, you know, Amazon's goal mm -hmm. is to grow its membership. So, um, you know, are retailers trying to, to halt that or slow that, that trend, or are they just trying to capitalize on all of this focus on a day of sales? Um, yeah, I think I think the word you use there is key is the short term. And I think as online has grown in the UK, so you know, eighteen percent of all retail sales in the UK are now online and that's up to nearly twenty five percent in non food, so a significant portion. As online has grown, there's been a lot of short termism in the market, a lot of promotion driven strategies. And that's really to the point where now that we did some research recently that over half, so fifty seven percent of shoppers feel that the frequent promotions online mean that you don't need to pay full price for items. And that for me would be a really worrying statistic if you're a retailer. If, if you've trained your customers to look for deals, that really undermines your full price integrity. Now, Amazon has a longer term benefit of Prime. So, you know, there's some revenue there and once someone's in Prime, they buy significantly more. If you don't have a scheme of an equivalent, essentially what you're doing is cutting your full price margin continuously just to try and keep up. And I think, you know, whilst that might work on a short term basis or on a single day, I think longer term, you know, Amazon is building Prime Day for the long term and just trying to catch it up is only thinking in the short term. I mean, that's a great point. As from the consumer perspective, you know, are they are they weary of all of these sales? It sort of sounds like, to a certain extent, there there is some of that going on. Yeah, I mean, again, just speaking in terms of the UK, we we have seen some weariness, you know, about Black Friday. Now, that's not to say Black Friday continues to grow in the UK. It's very much, you know, established now in in the uh, in the retail calendar. And to be honest, the 2019 event is shaping up to probably be the biggest one yet, given where it falls, you know, right at the end of the month, right near payday, you know, very close to Christmas. Uh, but, you know, it's an event that, you know, 39% of UK shoppers purchased something on last Black Friday. But actually, of those people that shopped, 57% said that they didn't think the discounts were as good as last year. And actually, two thirds say that they don't believe those deals are actually as good as they're made out to be by the retailers. And you can sort of see that in these events. You know, there'll be, you know, an Echo will be discounted on Black Friday, it will be discounted over the holiday period, and it will di be discounted on Prime Day. And there's, you know, for a customer point of view, you do sort of train yourself to think, well, I do want an Echo, but it's going to be discounted in a couple of months. Let's just wait for that. Yes. And this is, this is, a, this is a longer term problem. But uh, for Amazon, you know, there's obviously benefits. You get someone an Echo, they're going to keep Prime. They might use that to shop on you. You know, again, they're taking the long term view on this. I think in the US, I feel like some consumers may be weary. I mean, there are certainly, I mean, we were all kind of talking about it even before we started recording, like who's, who has bought on Prime Day, who's planning to buy them. You know, we all said, yeah, we buy stuff, but don't necessarily do a huge haul. And I think the, the attitude is kind of moving towards that, like, oh, like it's just Prime Day. I don't know if I want to like give into that or how good of a deal is it really going to be? But U.S. consumers who, especially those who are shopping online are doing so first and foremost out of a deal deal seeking mentality. I mean, that always dominates, at least in the US. And there may be other factors that play into it. I think the thing to remember is consumers may be buying on Prime Day and getting a Prime Day deal, whether they realize it or not, even if they're not buying it through Prime or, or on Amazon. So maybe they end up making a purchase that they didn't plan on doing or they didn't need to do 
from Target or from eBay or from a competitor just because the deal is right. And it's like, well, I guess like at some point I could, I could use that or I'll need that down the road or I was going to get that anyway, or just it's too good to resist. And you're still essentially making a prime day sale, even if you're not making it on prime, because that sale wouldn't have existed if prime day didn't. So that's kind of a different way of thinking about it. And I think Hmm. it's, yeah. It might not necessarily kick the benefit back to Amazon, but it's somehow it's kicking it back to the benefit of having this event. Mm. Interesting. All right, so let's talk about brands and and how and how brands can respond. So we've already t- spoken a little bit about that in terms of you know not necessarily taking the short term view and going for the the, the benefits of, of a sort of capitalizing on a sale day and thinking longer term what else can what else can brands do what are some best practices in in terms of brand response um i would say you know focus on kind of again i think what's important here is not to necessarily focus on the short term yes sales are important for kind of revving up the short-term revenue but Amazon is thinking long-term with everything they do, especially with Prime Day. So it's important for brands, uh, their best practice is to think about long-term and what can help uh, get their customers coming back to their store um, later on down the line. And I think the reality of this is that they're going to have to invest in a membership uh, or kind of like a exclusivity type of business model to kind of get uh, that dedicated consumer base to continue shopping on their own site. Mm. Yeah, I think that, that's a, a great point. I was recently at an event, um, it was a startup event for food and drink brands. And I was talking to a lot of um, a lot of the, the sort of entrepreneurs there. And they, um, a lot of them sell through Amazon to get their kickstart, you know, you know, through marketplace, etc. And so I was talking to them about it was about Black Friday, but about their approach because Amazon, you know, will promote, you know, its marketplace sellers hugely during these events. And you know, the some were very positive about it because they said this was the exposure that they could never dream of. You know, if their front page of Amazon, their sales are soaring. But a few of them said actually. We've, we've done it a couple of years and we, we're not going to do this anymore because ultimately the only people, only time people are buying our brand is when we're discounted and we don't want to be known as a discount brand mm-hmm. because it's, a, you know, they were saying that it then hurts us when we go and try and sell into, you know, one of the major grocers or et cetera from a buyer's point of view because then they're only looking for that discounted price. So I think it's a really careful balance here. You know, there's huge exposure, but equally, you know, it's a... Uh, not to keep saying it, the lot, the short but the long term goals. But I think if you're a newer brand, you know, it's an exposure that you can't hope to replicate. But I think it'd be wary to be, you know, consistently in this cycle of being the leader in terms of the discounts. So let's let's think about the future. Where is all this heading? Are we going to be having a national holiday for uh, Prime Day uh, in a few years' time? You know, where are, where is where is all this heading? Well, I doubt it would go anywhere anytime soon. I think the question is, how do you keep one-upping it, you know, for Prime or for Amazon itself? I mean, it would be one thing if this year their newness was the Taylor Swift concert and the streaming and things like that or just the two day event, but to have all of that is like the newness and that's just gonna be that much harder next year because you know, um, just like when you start discounting heavily and you train the customer to wait for those discounts, now we're training the customer to expect bigger and better every year. So it gets mm-hmm. harder and harder. And then again, it goes back to the contagion, like well, then what does that mean for Target and eBay and everybody else? Um, so I don't think it's gonna go anywhere soon. I think um, it's going to have to be it may be approached a little bit differently from a competitive standpoint in terms of like a twofold holiday. How does this spread out between now and like the July prime day holidays now and, and then the Christmas holiday and, and the black Friday and what does that mean? Um, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. I think it's just going to create more um, imitators and more competition. I think it's not just going to be Target and eBay that are coming back next year with it. And then that is going to cause retailers and brands to really rethink their holiday strategy. I think from the competition front, uh, something that we can for sure see in the future um, is immediacy in terms of delivery. 
So a pivotal point of a Prime membership is, of course, the two-day shipping. We're going to be seeing a lot more one-day shipping promotions for Prime, especially as they're trying to reinstill the value of a Prime membership and really kind of um, instill that immediacy that online shopping can give their consumers. And I think that that's something that many retailers are going to adopt. Um, I think that uh, immediate shipping, one-day shipping is going to become the norm across all of these retailers, Walmart and Target, because of what Amazon has established through Prime membership and its Prime Day. Yeah, and I'd be worried about if it was any other reseller, but I think down the years, Amazon has proved itself to be a relentless innovator. So, you know, to speak about what's new, you know, at least in, new, in the UK, we've now got Prime Wardrobe to promote this year. We've got Prime Music making a big uh, push. And indeed, by next Prime Day, we will have Premier League football uh, on Amazon Prime Video. And that, for the context of the UK market, is huge. It's the first, you know, non-traditional streaming platform to take rights away uh, from the likes of Sky, etc. It's only a couple of games, but if that goes well, you could see them making a bigger push into that. And then again, it, then it becomes an even bigger celebration around that. So I think, you know, Amazon has the capital to continue to invest in this. So I don't see it going any way uh, away. And they'll obviously have some new version of the Echo to sell next year as well. And, you know, to add to that, I think, you know, the future, we're starting to see it now, but retailers aren't just selling products anymore. We're going to see a lot more that they're going to be selling services as well on top of the things that you can buy and store. So they're going to be able to satisfy the streaming needs we have or the pharmaceutical needs as well. Mm. Great. Well, we're almost out of time. I'm going to just push you for a final question here is to ask you for your Prime Day tips in terms of bargains. Um, what have you got for me? Okay, I'll go first. Aside from the usual electronics, and I'm not a tech girl, so I'm not not your gal for those tips. I can tell you that um, from the apparel standpoint, they're going to be discounting Core 10, which is Amazon's activewear brand. It's new. It came out last year in 2018. I personally really like it. And um, I was just telling my mother this morning that you can get it on sale on Prime Day, which is a new thing. And I'm sure if that's on sale, there's going to be other um, activewear as well. So take advantage. All right. So, and uh, I'm banking on Apple. So Apple became a verified reseller on Amazon the end of 2018. And I think that's going to usher in Apple becoming um, kind of a pivotal aspect of Prime Day deals or at least kind of bundling as well. So I'm expecting to see some Apple products on sale and I'll hopefully be able to kind of update my iPhone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think from my point of view, the stuff I've really found really good discounts on is Amazon usually does some kind of blanket discount to, you know, go to Laren's point on just their general warehouse deal, their refurbished stuff. So often, you know, in terms of electronics, you can get a really good deal there. Um, and I think actually, if you look at Prime Video, uh, usual new uh, new movie rentals will be down to, you know, a pound here, a dollar there. So that's always good. Uh, personally, I'm looking out for an iron because mine just broke, but that's not very, that's not very I think you can wait a few days to get one. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, have to see. It depends, depends on how badly my shirts do, but yeah, uh, but that's what I'm looking out for this year. Excellent. I love it. Mintel analysts, insights on the market, but also tips for what to buy. It's all uh, coming together. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Liren. Thank you, Nick. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on iTunes or any other platform you get your podcast from. We've launched, so spread the word and catch you next week for a new episode of Little Conversation. If you want to know more about Mintel, who we are and what we do, head over to mintel.com and follow us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And check out our blog for even more insights from our analysts. Thank you. Thank you.